Ron Stoke. I'm here on Samish Island, a beautiful area of the country. We're about an hour and a half from Seattle, maybe an hour uh, south of the Canadian border. We're here to do a quick watercolor study. Um, the weather's moved in. It was sunny a bit earlier. Um, I can already see the paper on the easel starting to buckle. So we're going to get to it. I've got some students here that are going to pose as models. They're going to paint while uh, I paint them and the uh, beautiful landscape behind us. So stick around and we're going to have a good time. The very first pencil line, the very uh, first mark that I put on the, the paper is my horizon line. I'll have the, the uh, area of dominance or my target area down here and it'll, it'll pull you away from that so I'm not worried about that. Just a good rule of thumb, uh, keep your corners boring. And um, that, that way you're, you're allowing that viewer to, to stay here where you want it to, maybe go out to these supporting elements and then come back uh, to where you want them to, to rest. If you're, if you're gonna put a figure here, which I often do, you better make sure that you're able to connect it to that area without um, creating a, an awkward tension point. Now we can just start on, on the figures. You know, there's three there. So um, I'll start with the head. When you're drawing those figures, if, whether they're sitting or standing, uh, just be aware of the, you know, if the shoulders are, are bent one way, the hips are normally bent the, the opposite way. We'll, um, we'll rest that, that weight on, uh, I guess it's this leg here. We get him up higher. You know, if his if his shoulders are, uh, or if his hips this way, his shoulders are kind of this way, then move his shoulder, or move his hips here. You know, his his elbow is here. His his arm is is maybe wrapped around here. We'll we'll uh, refine that a little bit. I think I'm gonna have to move this out here a bit. Um, uh, be aware of how a, an arm will disappear within a torso or a, how a, a leg will support the weight of the body and how it will react with perspective. Don't worry about all this. It'll, we'll paint over it or I'll erase it here in a second. Um, just get, his, get that structure right. That's, that's nice. We'll get that, that uh, easel up there. And you can see... Uh, you know, it's pretty dark. For watercolorists, they freak out about that a little bit, but the older I get, the darker I draw, I swear. You see, I, I changed this a little bit. I had to push these guys over a little bit. There's a, I, I uh, added that bush, maybe with a little bit more foliage, um, and added a, a fourth figure, which is uh, uh, my other student who is uh, braving the weather today, uh, who is right over here, but I, I chose to put him in the center of the, of the painting. That's my main character. We will focus in right there. It, it's not a, a painting of, of a stormy sky, although we get uh, lovely stormy skies up here. It's almost got to be a, uh, an afterthought, this guy. Even though it, it is setting the stage, it's, um, it's not the most important thing of the, of the painting. So I'm gonna, this is just a, a mix of some burnt sienna, a little purple, warm it up a little bit, maybe knock that down. And, and this is where we're gonna really make a statement on the sky. Be really nice and light. Just a little bit of color. Soften those edges if you need to. 
just a shot of blue there and you can usually work that out I'm gonna throw a little a little bit of color on this for for later I'll, I'll, I'll pick out a highlight here and there um, you just want to avoid any hard edges right now I'm gonna dance over his hat uh, she's wearing a kind of a grayed hat but I'm gonna leave it white I want to get to these this hillside here not too warm get that hillside although I prefer that um, that tertiary it's it's a it's really a, a mud those those uh, tertiary colors they're not you know as vibrant and as pretty as the uh, primaries but I tell you they're more realistic and if you can add them to your paintings rather than a nice beautiful blue back there um, I think you'll be more satisfied that's just going to go into whatever I might while I'm here cut him in half here do that just connecting those those shapes figures before uh, before I lose that little little color doesn't matter there she, she was wearing a red shirt I think it's got a black overcoat but leave a few little whites here and there I'm going to move right into her partner. Down here you can get a little sparkle in there and maybe while that's while that's drying. If you get some uh, some uh, splatters up in your sky, then that's one less bird you have to paint. Fairly light. And that's the first wash. We drip down, tilt the board a bit. You know, we're out in the middle of, of some weeds here, and and this stuff uh, does look more natural than if we were to paint it just a solid color. Gonna let this dry, and uh, then we can go from there. that hillside as if that cloud this is just clean water or somewhat clean just as if that clouds um, covering up some of that hill you see I got a brush mark here take care of that now these um, these middle ground uh, trees you really need to treat them with about the same attention as I just did that background hill I've got a, just a series of blues greens maybe some purples I'll um, I'll try out that brush stroke using that that uh, brush against the the cold press paper the texture in the paper this I'll finish later I want that to look more like a natural line rather than a manufactured line there's some yellow in there that's really my base tone I'm, I'm just careful over the, the little details certainly his hat now you can go in and you know throw in some darks and you see there's are not they're not really pretty greens or 
really uh, vibrant yellows. It's it's knocked down a bit, and I do that for a couple of reasons. One, because that's really how it is, and two, I don't want it distracting from again my my uh, main subject matter. There's an evergreen here, so I'm gonna load up a dry brush. Continue to, if, if you lose a shadow, you know, uh, go back in and, and reinforce it. Again, we don't, we don't want to create a tension up here, so I'm, I'm going to do it quickly and maybe even hit it with uh, some water just to lose that edge that there's sun hitting that at some point. around her I would have liked to have had that one brush stroke back but <clears throat> oh well this is tedious I know I'm, I'm not a big fan of it but you gotta do it this is where that beach starts I'm just gonna load that in there try to capture that that fun little line bounce around her sketchbook in here and then this this actually connects here you can probably see that the uh, paper is is quite wet and um, I'm gonna pull some of that back and uh, very rippled and that is normal for the Pacific Northwest Really gonna have to pull some of that back or go darker on this. Let me try here. He doesn't matter right now. I know this is looking really awful right now, but I'm hoping that once I'm done, it'll it'll look right. I uh, forgot that that little. Little area with the rocks. I'm going to hit those with a little bit darker value. That's that's pretty wet, so that's going to wash in there. I might that might be something I go back in the studio and just hit while I'm uh, assessing this thing later on. Don't don't do a lot here. You know, it's just a, a quick shape. Connect them and move on. Don't let that uh, that. Uh, uh, watermark bother you um, what you can do is you know dry off your brush and just lay it in there and it'll it'll soak up all the water or, or just use it like this lay in a few more darks while this is still wet another series of splattering look at all those birds I'm painting so back into my water, I'm using her as a, as a stopping point. So now I uh, can get started on these figures. Need to paint all the legs and arms and all that stuff. It just keep that fresh. Okay, so her arm would be there. Do that. That's maybe the chair, the the um, seat she's on. Uh, let's get some of this hat in there. Kind of cool that down a bit. Be a nice shadow in there, falling across. Be 
nice shadowed face. Let that play around. Shadow this person's face underneath the chin. And when you look at these things, they're just blobs. I, you know, my figures, they're nothing special. They're just blobs on blobs. That blob's kind of getting away from me. <coughs> um, that I like that this is just kind of a grade seat here that's got to be strong value and her other legs kind of flared out like her legs were being crossed Not quite happy with, or not quite happy with that uh, shadow color. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to uh, warm it up just a little bit, and then just tie tie all these guys in here. So something like this. Skip over all this stuff. So that ties into there. That leg goes off there. Goes up. Skips over a. You know, a piece of grass or whatever. Maybe ties in with her. Finish that off. And then pull some grass out of there, just like I did over, over there. Maybe there's a little shadow there. Just kind of make this stuff up as you go. Yeah, I think we're I think we're good on those we'll guys. Test it on this white, this white paper. That's close. So I'm just you know doing the little necessary stuff. Tie him in. There's the shadow. Since we're looking at the back of him, we really don't need to include a, a face too much, but I'll, I'll go back and throw a little um, opaque paint there and uh, after it's all done. He's wearing a green shirt, but I might... I might just change the change it into a dark yeah way too dark maybe, maybe a little purple in there let all that stuff bleed and you can uh, you can tell again that the the val or the color doesn't matter. It's all about that value. So you want to get that value right. I'm gonna dry brush. I'm gonna finish his arm. This piece here. This piece here is just a suggestion of that arm. Don't, don't get crazy about that. Okay. And now the legs. I know uh, you can struggle with the legs, but keep them, keep them quick and dry brush. A couple brush strokes and you should be done. Even if it's at the beginning, you have to really rework that that leg. Uh, you know, just go back in and do it. But what I'd rather have is a is a quick, confident brush stroke than 
a real labored, you know, somewhat trying to be perfect brush stroke. Should mix it in. That's a top bracket to that easel there. Yeah, the, the side supports. Don't think you have to spell out the brush, the uh, full brush stroke either. Sometimes these little wispy brush strokes are just beautiful lines. How that ties everything together. His uh, water container, I think, was green, but now it's red. Get these shadows on and, and get going. Let's see, that might be a little odd. So, carry those shadows on. And then he's obviously, you know, casting a nice big shadow. Um, this is where you can get a little bit more freer with the brush stroke down his leg. Just make sure you connect all this stuff. Might be dangerous, but I'm just gonna lose some of that a little bit. You know, just need to beef that up, change it a little bit. Don't think you need to. Your shadow needs to be exactly what your the shape of what you're painting. Because remember, it's hitting a the surface. There's a different perspective to it. Um, and it, uh, once you get it down, I think it, it, re it will read right. I'm just gonna dab that up here so it's clean. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go back and do uh, just some quick brush strokes before this rain hits us and then I'll probably finish uh, finish it up at the studio. So, you know, a couple branches here, tie that in, and then I don't want to forget the uh, the oyster beds out here. Um, you know, be quick with these guys too. Just just a couple brush or you know, quick brush strokes. There, there. Tie them in with the the roping or the netting out there. At least this morning. Um, we had some nice light. We had uh, a really nice group of folks come out and join us. I will, I'll then go back and maybe do in a, a little bit of just volume here. No, not much detail. Well, I'll do all the little bits and pieces on their hats, maybe some shadows. Um, I'm not gonna try to get clever and do anything on his canvas. That'll, that'll uh, kill you. Don't fall into those traps. And throw some birds in and sign it. I think, uh, I think it'll be done.